Hello everyone. Okay, we have quite a lot of people already. Hello, uh, good afternoon. Welcome to first um, virtual Bloom event. My name is Bartosz. I'm a coffee expert for Harrods and here representing uh, Leadership Council of Barista Guild. Um, now hang up to Rob. Hi, I'm Rob. Uh, I'm the national coordinator for the UK chapter um, for the Speciality Coffee Association. Uh, and I'm here to co-present with Bartosz and uh, take you through uh, this wonderful Bloom event. Right, so thank you, Rob. I'm so excited about it. So Bloom started originally in 2016 as a coffee event to engage local coffee leaders, create a space for a deeper discussion and um, an engagement for coffee professionals um, through presentation, panel discussions and Q&A. This year, first time, as I mentioned, we, we, we've done it online and uh, we did it in three different uh, countries. We did it in Mexico, in US and Germany. And this is the fourth event and the last of the series in UK. So far, we had over 500 participants and over a thousand recordings. Uh, links to recordings were distributed so people actually watch it. So, this is probably the most, you know, the, 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 we have the biggest audience. So I'm super happy about it. And uh, I'm looking forward into, into today's, um, today's event. Uh, I wanted to thank you to, thank you to our sponsors without uh, which we, we wouldn't be able to, to do the event. And that's uh, Licor 43 or Licor 43 from Spain, um, Da Vinci Gourmet, uh, and Brevista, and I will hang out now to Rob. Thank you, guys, and enjoy. Thank you, Bartosz, and uh, it is great to be here with this event. Um, now, um, those people who signed up from the UK will have or should have hopefully received their coffees from our wonderful UK uh, coffee sponsors. So I'd like to give a big shout out to uh, Bewley's, uh, sorry, Grumpy Mule, um, for providing a wonderful coffee and also Union Hand Roasted as well. Now, uh, during the coffee breaks that we've got in between the speakers, um, it's going to be, uh, there's going to be a short video just talking about the coffees um, that have been presented. So do feel free to kind of brew along, watch the video, um, listen to their tasting notes, also give them feedback as well um be great um on their coffees and remember you can use um the hashtags hashtag uh bloom i think that's the correct one i'll double check on that it's here somewhere um and um yeah so watch those videos uh enjoy your coffees um and that's all good from me so I think without further ado, then we should uh, give a big uh, bloom and SCA UK welcome to Emma. Emma um, is going to be uh, talking to us about online training and how to adjust their delivery in the digital age. Emma is a fantastic AST trainer and consultant with Kafina Consultancy. Um, she's worked as a trainer for the past 16 years, uh, initially in hospitality, where she specialised in coffee uh, and was part of the rise of third wave within the UK. She's got such a great passion for people and development. Emma and I have spent uh, time talking uh, at AST events, at uh, SCA UK chapter competitions, um, she's a resident trainer at the London School of Coffee and regularly supports startup clients expanding businesses. Um, most recently, she has 
um, done such a lot of work on the adjustment to online training for SEA courses, creating online video training services and supporting uh, so many people uh, in these crazy times. Um, so let's welcome uh, Emma Haynes. Hi, Emma. Hi, Rob. Hi. Hi Rob. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, and hello. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's an absolute honour, uh, firstly, to be asked to to speak here. Um, and I hope what I have uh, put together to present to you this afternoon is um, useful and something that maybe you can kind of take away and uh, either implement or it might give you ideas about how you can uh, start to bring new things into your business or if you are currently a trainer um, and you are like many of us you know really struggling and, and uh, not quite sure how to transition what you offer um, to kind of beat that post-covid um, you know lull that we're all feeling um, then hopefully it might give you a few ideas. And also, um, I'll mention it again at the end, but please do feel free to reach out to me if I can help you at all. Okay, so um, online training and how to adjust delivery in a digital age. Um, so firstly, I, I wanted to kind of cover the fact that um, we know that, uh, you know, the demand for coffee is... Uh, it's changed. We have a, a very uh, unstable uh, kind of period of time at the moment where everybody's settling, people are coming off of furlough, they're going back into the roastery, they're uh, bringing staff back off of leave um, and people are trying to find their feet. We know that uh, the home market is booming, people are really interested in upping their, their game at home, which is amazing um, and they're looking at, you know, there's lots of new uh, people entering into the industry. I've noticed a real rise in people inquiring about setting up new businesses and, you know, they want to uh, change because they've been working from home or they've realised that there's more to life than being in the office, <clears throat> excuse me, and maybe they actually want to get out and, and do their passion, which is coffee. Um, so the, the demand has kind of changed, but there is still uh, definitely a need for it. We know that it it forms, uh, you know, such a huge part of obviously our lives, um, but that of consumer lives as well. Um, so I think that what's really important for us to know when we look at transitioning to online is firstly, um, we know that just by making something online, it shouldn't mean it's low quality and it doesn't need to mean it's low quality. Um, I struggled initially um, thinking that we would essentially uh, have to lower our offering. You know, how do we maintain uh, the kind of level, the uh, standard that we strive really hard to provide, uh, be that at London School of Coffee or be that something that I do uh, independently with clients? Um, how can I retain that, but yet, you know, be at home sitting in an office uh, and not going out and, and being face to face with clients? Um, but it is possible. Um, we we know that people uh, now more than ever need to focus on upskilling. Uh, people are being faced with, you know, the possibility of redundancy or maybe their job role is changing. Maybe you're working within a small business and you are suddenly, you know, we work in um, within small businesses. You often wear many hats anyway, but maybe that's going to be more prevalent than ever because there's fewer of you. There's less of you in the team. Um, so I think that it's really important that we kind of, you know, consider all of those uh, things and know that, um, you know, we can push forward and create a plan and, and deliver something really high quality. At the end of the day, as I've mentioned here, uh, digital training is here to stay. Whether we like it or not, um, it's here to stay. And I think that one of the things that I uh, initially was confronted with, I was really stubborn. I was like, absolutely no way. No way am I doing it online. I'm a people person. Anybody that's ever met me in the past or spoken to me in the past will know that my passion is in people. I want to see people, engage with people, work with people, uh, you know, a mentor people in a, in a you know, face-to-face -face capacity. So it was really weird for me. And I kind of went a little bit underground with it all. And I just buried my head in the sand and I kind of ignored it. Um, but I made a decision, I think, with the transition of the SCA training 
to uh, embrace it. And I am looking back even over these past kind of six months and I am eternally grateful that I did. So if you are thinking, well, this is just a phase and it's going to go away, honestly, I don't think it is. The feedback that we are now getting from courses and from students that are attending courses, uh, clients that I'm doing independent consultancy work with, it's so high. I really don't think we're going to go back to what we used to have in the same way. I think we need this to fit in as well. Um, and that's not to mention without any uh, additional restrictions that we may face with, with COVID. Uh, so the thing that I wanted to kind of look at was, um, you know, literally, as you can see now on the screen, just what, why, when and how. Because when I thought about putting this together, it was, I'll be honest, it was it was tough to kind of know what to give you. It was like I didn't want to spend 25 minutes of your time or half an hour of your time telling you all about me and my story, because who's got time for that? And, you know. Uh, it's not that exciting, but what I wanted to do was kind of try and work out a way to almost take you on like a bit of a, the journey that I did. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, hopefully in the sense uh, that it will help you understand how you can implement it or ways that you can do it. So I think the first thing that you need to really consider is what, you know, what training can you really honestly uh, take online? So I've given you a bit of a, a kind of insight into some of the things that I do. Um, and that is uh, to reflect what the market wants. Um, and also uh, some of them are things that maybe I've uh, decided just to test the water with. Um, so as, uh, as it was mentioned, um, I am a, an SCA AST, which means I'm an authorized trainer. And I have been for a few years. And I have been through, you know, a few different curriculum changes. I teach different modules um, and I have, you know, really kind of embedded that uh, that SCA uh, training into my skill set and what I offer. I'm, I'm known for teaching uh, many different SCA courses. Um, teaching things like sensory and green coffee uh, at foundation level um, I have to say it was a really beautiful transition. It was something that felt very natural and uh, felt actually quite easy to transition. Now, I know that may seem strange because anybody that's ever done any SCA training or teaches SCA training will know that, you know, certainly with sensory and screen, you know, we take both of those courses, for example, and both of them will have uh, a big focus on us working together, forming a panel, um, you know, having uh, the opportunity to taste coffees together and to explore coffees together. But you'll also know if you've ever attended that training or taught it, that at foundation level, um, we are really about empowering students to know that they can do it. So for me, it was very important to kind of understand firstly, you know, what is it that I want to transition to online? And then how can I continue to provide what I consider to be, you know, my um, key key things, if you like. So what is most important to the students? And that was varied. Uh, that went from being, you know, uh, a community kind of group. So having that uh, ongoing kind of um, support network that if you train at London School of Coffee, for example, with me or one of the other amazing trainers there, you'll know that you get. Um, so it went from like, how do we provide that support network to also um, how do we make sure that people are getting really good value for money and that these courses are really interactive? Because if I am, you know, if somebody is choosing to undertake a foundation level course with me, that's an honor. And I don't, you know, look a gift horse in the mouth. I, I know that they've chosen to come with me and perhaps London School of Coffee for a reason. And so therefore, it's my duty to provide the highest level I can possibly deliver and the highest quality I can deliver. So I wanted the courses to be really interactive. I'll talk in a minute about, you know, different learning styles and how we can implement that. But that was one of the key things. So when I wrote my list about, you know, what I needed to convert to online and what might be possible, I'll be honest with you, I left off barista skills. Um, I didn't want to touch it. I was like, how am I going to teach that? It's too practical. Um, and I focused on, if you liked, the kind of lower hanging fruit in the sense that those things that I knew I could convert a little bit easier. 
Um, if you are familiar with the uh, Coffee Skills Programme and the modules, you will know now that all of the foundation uh, courses are now available uh, to be taught online and they can be done solely online, which again uh, was very strange uh, when we are very used to delivering a practical exam and a theory exam. Um, I didn't really know, you know, how to do it, what to do. But I think because I had already started uh, to look at an offering, be that at that point non-certified, um, I knew that uh, I just needed to kind of maybe tweak what I had. And at the end of the day, I decided that I'll let my students be the judge of this. So we ran, you know, a couple of uh, programs um, and we, we took some feedback from it and we developed it on from there. But I would definitely say that the first thing you need to do is like, look at what is your demand? What do your customers need? What can you easily transition? Um, and make yourself a, a comprehensive list. Don't worry if it seems really out of reach. So for example, if you need to provide a training that you absolutely cannot do uh, without uh, an in-person element, put it on the list because there might be some parts of it that you can do, that you can make online, that you can give your student homework with, or you can give your client, your customer, you know, another way to engage with it. And maybe instead of doing the whole thing in person, you can reduce the need for that contact time and you can support it with some online stuff as well. So stick it down, get that down in your list. I think with regards to the why, um, well, I mean, Firstly, I think you need to be sensible and smart and I think you need to keep up with the market. Um, why deliver online? Because I will tell you right now, the quality can be really, really high. And I know that doesn't sound uh, uh, like it would obviously be as good as perhaps in person. But honestly, I find that the amount of information that I am able to disseminate to students or to clients is phenomenal. I use a system that enables me to build on it. I'm not just doing a Zoom call and then, fit, not that there's anything wrong with that if that's your route, but I'm not doing a Zoom call and following out with emails. I actually have an online system where they log in and they are able to access things. So the quality is really high. And it actually, some of the feedback that we've had from our first kind of round of students was that they felt that they had a, a kind of learning journey that began with this first session and it continues. And I still now update those folders. If a new uh, bit of research comes out, if a new report or a new white paper is available, I'll drop it in there. So even students that maybe did a, a foundation course with me two months ago, they get this new bit of reading that they can access if they want to. They can stay in contact with each other. So the quality can be really high. Uh, we know that we, uh, you know, our customers and our staff still deserve and still want to be uh, upskilling. So they can be, maybe you're upskilling yourself as an individual because you are looking for a new position within the industry or you're looking at getting into the industry. Uh, maybe you need to upskill your staff. Um, it could be that you're looking at progressing your career uh, and moving into a, a different avenue or entering into coffee for the first time. Um, I think where I've mentioned here about online offerings uh, reaching a wider audience, it is amazing let me tell you now to run classes with people from all over the world it's such a lovely thing i mean it may mean you need to do a bit of a strange schedule and you may find yourself sitting in front of the camera at 11 p.m at night but it's really amazing um it it's so fulfilling and rewarding for not just you as a trainer to reach a wider audience but for your students to reach a wider audience because what happens is you go from having somebody that maybe lives, you know, in the middle of England and they're not in what they would consider to be, you know, the specialty scene to suddenly having them in a room with people from all over the world. And they form friendships, they discuss with each other, they support each other, uh, they start to follow each other on social media and it is amazing. So you can, not only from a business perspective, can you broaden your horizons, but you also can uh, have a real high level of fulfillment for your students. 
Um, there are, of course, options for uh, live training that you can add in, and you can also do pre-prepared materials. Anyone, again, that wants to teach SCA courses or already does teach SCA courses will know that they must be live taught. So you cannot, you know, pre-upload it, pre-record it and, and sell it. That's not doable. Uh, however, uh, there are options if you are, for example, a coffee company and you want to have, uh, you know, some materials prepared that you can then uh, just pass out to people or maybe give them a login to uh, reach in their own time. That's absolutely uh, possible. And I'll show you something that I do uh, as a service to roasteries uh, as an example on that. Um, videos, recordings and reading materials. Uh, they are so beneficial. Um, giving students the opportunity to continue learning is so important. In education, we always want people to be responsible for their own learning journey. And I think coffee should not be any different. So uh, it's your job, I see it as my job as a trainer and your job as a trainer to um, inspire people. So we want to get people hooked. You know, tell them how amazing this industry is. And we want them to then say, this is phenomenal and I want to learn everything I can about it. And you want them to continue learning. Even if that is uh, from somebody that buys your coffee uh, and they are a wholesale customer, you want them to be so uh, bought into the brand that they are selling it for you. Uh, so there's lots and lots of options for, uh, you know, further reading and, and people uh, growing their own uh, skill set. Um, of course, it goes without saying that providing a really strong digital offering will help you with customer retention. Again, I'll show you something in a minute as an example of that. Um, you can adjust your training or your message to reflect your own brand. So one of the really lovely things is I have been more recently, you know, this year for the first time, I've actually had a bit of time to focus on, you know, who am I and what is my brand? Um, you know, I spend a lot of my time helping other people with theirs, but I hadn't spent a lot of time focusing on my own. And I think the more content that I create or the more that I, um, you know, deliver online, um, the more materials I write, the more uh, things that I do, the more that I'm building that brand. And I know what sits with my brand and what doesn't. Um, so that's really good. It helps you get that across. Um Accessibility, I'll talk about a couple of points, but it is huge. Um, I have always been a massive advocate for accessibility uh, to people um, within the industry. I don't care from what perspective we're looking at that from. So whether that is physical or financial, um, you know, whatever, wherever there may be a barrier, I want to help people remove that barrier and I think that one of the things that you can do um, with your digital delivery is make your material a lot more accessible um, and I, I really truly believe that it can excel that side of it massively and I will as I go through the last few slides I'll, I'll show you a bit more on that um, and finally on there just you know because YouTube exists and I mean we're going to put that on because you know in a sense don't get me wrong there's some phenomenal content available for free on YouTube and that is amazing and I'm really into sharing you know quality content and pointing people in the right direction and it's brilliant but there's also some really bad quality material and there's some heavily branded material. So if you have your own customer base, you don't want to be sending them somewhere uh, where they're going to be really heavily marketed to by another brand because, you know, that would be crazy. So if you're not providing your own content, they will look elsewhere. Uh, because it's just the style that people are leaning towards to want to learn on. So I'm going to show you a quick video now. Um, and this is just a sample video that's pulled from my website. Um, and I won't play you the whole thing, but it just gives you a bit of an idea about um, one of the, you know, uh, one of the ways that you can access uh, a client and how you can deliver um, high quality uh, training. So this comes from a service that I have set up, uh, which I'll only briefly mention because it's not a pitch for that, I promise. But it's, uh, it's a service to coffee companies and roasteries. Uh, that they can subscribe to and they can then 
uh, use the training materials that I've created to support their um, customers. And the training materials that I've chosen to pro provide for this are video. Um, so I've pre-recorded uh, videos that people can access and then that's embedded with quizzes and stuff. Um, and kind of, I suppose it's at that like entry level on-site training kind of bracket with a view that then hopefully people choose to, to take up the, the CSP route and go on certified training with the SCA. Okay, so I'll quickly show you that. intended to be a, a big sound pitch <laughs> um, but I just wanted to show you now what you might have noticed um, is that what we tried to do there was uh, firstly focus on it being uh, very factual so one of the things that I wanted to make sure with that particular uh, set of videos was that we weren't about promoting any uh, any individual or item or anything like that. So we we tried to make it solely about the quality of the uh, you know the delivery that we would anticipate from that barista. So uh, the market that that hits and it, it's working. Um, you know we we have customers using it and and the feedback is is good and we're constantly developing and adding content. And one of the things that we're getting is that people are loving the fact that they can just read it on the screen. So I. But I went with that option uh, because I didn't want it to be about, uh, firstly, about me creating video content. It was not about that at all. Um, I wanted it to be really crisp and clear and easy to follow. So what I actually ended up doing was writing what we call shot lists um, that would have the steps that I would teach in class. So imagining somebody had never been in front of an espresso machine before, how would I teach this on a, a foundation level course? Let's take the steps and put them into a video. And it was a, a, a really straightforward concept, but with accessibility at the center of that. Because I didn't want it to be, if so, you know, if somebody speaks English as a second or third language, if somebody um, struggles with hearing, I didn't want them to not be able to follow what I was doing on the video. It didn't need to be hugely stylized because it needed to just be factual and really crisp. Um, and that was kind of the way that we uh, decided to, to go for it. And, and the feedback has been good. Um, we embed a quiz and things so we know people are, are following the steps and there's a few little sneaky questions in there to make sure they've watched the videos. And, you know, so that kind of service is, is an offering that you can utilize or you could create. Uh, depending on you know how you want to, to go about it um okay so when um i have to say that uh the when part is really completely up to you i think that as a trainer whenever you want if you want to reach an international audience brilliant but be prepared to be starting a training session brewing up a coffee at 3 30 in the morning or you know quarter to one in the morning or whatever um if you want to create a, a digital uh, but offline so not live tool training platform then amazing let the student log in and, and learn at their own uh, pace you know they can do it whenever they want um, I tend to do a bit of a mix because as I say I teach quite a lot of SCA courses so they are always live tool um, but you really can tailor it to suit you. And if you are a company, you can use a third party. So, you know, I have clients that utilize the services that I provide and they brand them. We brand them as theirs and that's great. Uh, or if you choose to create your own, you can decide on a, a method, a delivery method essentially that suits you. So you just, just roll with it and, um, you know, decide what suits your business best. 
Uh, and for the student, obviously their access to it will just depend on what it is you offer. Um, but let me tell you now, as a full-time working mum of two young boys who used to travel a thousand miles a week, this is phenomenal. So the fact that you can choose your hours is literally uh, heaven sent. It really is amazing. So use that to your advantage. Um, with regards to how, I think that, again, it's very business uh, specific. You have to see what suits you. And I think you have to know what your need is. What is the need that you're trying to fill? Um, who is your target audience? Uh, you need to consider, uh, you know, teaching style. So what is your delivery style or the delivery style of, uh, you know, the person within your organization that you're thinking of utilizing? Um, and do they need any skill development? Do they need any upskilling before you can just put them in front of a camera and expect them to get on with it? Um, what about accessibility? You know, how will people access this? Uh, what is the um, kind of right uh, market, uh, the right route for people to access it? Um, who are you trying to reach? I'll give you an example of that. Some of the videos that I um, have recorded um, are, will be translated or are being translated into other languages so that people uh, can utilize them anywhere in the world. Um, and also uh, what that also gives is um, it takes away a lot of the pressure. If people are working within a group environment, if they feel that they're having to keep up with their peers, uh, one of the things that you can really kind of hone in on is if you have somebody that just for whatever reason, there's a multitude of, of different reasons why they may not keep up with their peers in class, but it means that they can just access it and, and uh, take it at their own pace. And that is a really, really lovely thing because you can really support amazing people and uh, amazing growth within people if you let them just take it at their own pace. Um, because honestly, some of the best baristas I've ever trained, they didn't necessarily get everything first time around. Um, but once they got it, they really got it. Um, affordability, um, you, you need to kind of, uh, consider what you as a business can afford. You know, how much do you want to spend on this? How much are you currently spending on training? Um, I think the digital service is certainly from my perspective was never, I've never designed any of my materials to, uh, stop uh, uh, in-person training, um, not at all. That would be, you know, ludicrous and very short-sighted of me to do that. What I provide is something that is an add-on so that um, you are making the most of the uh, in-person or the one-to-one the -one time that you then have with a trainer. Let's not go over the basics because they'll already know them. So when you spend time, when you spend money uh, with somebody, uh, make sure that you're getting the best value for money by really going from good to excellent and really like upskilling you or, you know, uh, the staff members. Um, accountability is uh, another thing that you need to consider. Um, so you need to really think about, you know, how much accountability do you need? Is there a certain thing that you need to make sure you are ticking off? Um, so, for example, with the system that I run um, on the Kafina website, for my clients, and bear in mind, my clients are coffee businesses or roasteries, um, for my clients, I provide them a monthly report. Um, and they just get a report. It basically just tells them who's done what uh, on the, the tests on the site. Um, and we offer, um, you know, that service just so they can keep up to date with it. Because we all know that when you go to a wholesale meeting and you are having to say to, uh, you know, in, you're, you're fighting to perhaps keep that wholesale um, customer or you're looking to renew that contract with them or whatever, um, you know, you need to be able to evidence it. They want to see uh, some uh, evidence of what you've been uh, providing. And so you need to understand what your level of accountability needs to be. Um, ensuring engagement. Uh, it's so crucial. Uh, I used to believe it or not, despite now everything is is embedded in in online and and presentations. I used to hate death by PowerPoint. Um, so make sure that you um, keep everything you do really engaging. Um, you can uh, add in video content. You can add in lots of uh, breaks. You can do activities. Whatever, do it. 
uh, keep it really um, exciting for them. Keep your content relevant, keep it up to date, don't let it get old or expired. Um, make sure that anything you teach is bite size. Uh, sometimes you don't get a quite the same level of feedback or you don't feel like you are. Uh, so it's really important to stop and check that everybody's getting everything you do. And if you need to take other people, um, you know, and give them a little bit of extra time, you can and you can get your group doing other things. Um, and I think it's really important that you kind of break everything down and you don't just deliver it all in one foul swoop. Um, and follow up is really important on that as well. OK, so uh, I know I don't have uh, much time left, so I'm just going to uh, briefly go over the last couple of bits. So. The key things, and by the way, this presentation, if anybody wants to kind of flick for it afterwards, is available as well. So I think the key thing here is uh, focus on your customers or your team. You know, what are their needs? What are the barriers that they are currently experiencing or could experience? Can they even get online, for example? Um, build your training offer. Split your content into categories. Keep lesson content really manageable and digestible and try to break the system. Like, don't make it stagnant and stale. And if it doesn't work the first time, it's not going to work the second or third time. So just keep keep going and keep trying new things. Um, pin down practicalities. You know, how are you going to deliver it? Do you have the right tech in place? How will you manage it going forward? Uh, is it something that you can launch and then keep up with and, and deliver at the right level for those students or those customers? And then future proof it. So if you're creating content and you're putting it out there, you know, can it be shared? Is it something you want shared? Maybe it is brilliant. Go for it. Make it shareable. Uh, but is somebody going to plagiarize it and take it as their own? Um, how are you going to manage the ongoing costs? Are you hosting a platform or a service that has ongoing costs with it? Um, and how can you continue to build on it or add more value for your students? Um, is face to face training still viable? Absolutely. I see online and more traditional training as um, a complete support for each other. Um, I think it's really, really important that we, um, you know, make sure that they sit side by side and they don't. It's not one or the other. It can be both really beautifully. Um, I've mentioned here about uh, a few pitfalls. Um, but you just uh, need to make sure that what you are offering does uh, focus on a genuine need. Make sure it's what your customers want. Um, you need to avoid it being uh, too easily replicated or, or shared if you don't want that to happen. Of course, if you want it to, that's great. Um, make sure it doesn't just focus on one learner type or one learner style. Uh, include lots of different things and lots of different activities and ways to deliver the training so that you suit everybody and you try and include everybody in it. Um, make sure that you don't have this lack of accountability uh, because you may have people asking for it, especially if you are charging for training um, or if you are delivering certified training or you're trying to hold on to an account, for example. Uh, and make sure that you are not falling into the pitfall that you've got this really great platform to deliver on and you just don't have the uh, system to run it or you don't have the speed. I mean, I've had to have Fiverr installed to the premises to do some of the things that I wanted to do because that was a, a thing I fell into. Um, and then finally, I've just included a little checklist. Um, so always make sure that you check your and your customer's need, whoever that customer is, even if that's a staff member of yours, just make sure you check the need and the business need. Um, research your training and delivery. Make sure that what you offer is the best you can possibly do. And consider uh, engaging an external contractor if it's someone that specializes in delivering that and doing that. Um, it doesn't make what you offer lower quality or lower value, uh, quite the contrary in, in many cases. Um, you need to actually deliver it. So you can have these great ideas and you can come up with this content, but deliver it. Uh, deliver it and see what actually happens. And then check your feedback. Do not be afraid of feedback. It can be very daunting. It can feel very personal but take it and listen to everything everybody gives you. I'm so grateful for feedback um, all the time. Uh, sometimes it's harder than others to take, but you know you always want to listen to it uh, because that is the most critical thing that you can use to advance. And make sure that you expand your offering um, and develop it as your business grows. Um, so I think I've pretty much covered everything. Sorry, I can, anyone knows I can talk for England, so I'm going to stop there. I have included a little poll if you want to just have a bit of a go. It was just really to uh, 
gauge whether or not anybody's already introduced online training or if it's something you're thinking about. Um, and it goes without saying that if you have any questions, um, you can either ask them uh, during this time or, um, you know, contact me afterwards. I'm really uh, open to discussing options with people and running over things. Okay. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Back to Rob. <laughs> Maybe. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. That was, uh, is maybe um, not. Um, so, um, yes, no, Emma. Maybe Emma's uh, disappeared, but we'll communicate the questions uh, to Emma and then hopefully she will respond. So, um, I'd love to thank Emma for that really um, engaging talk. And, you know, I think um, we, we found uh, so much um, changes recently. Um, so let's have a look at the questions. So um, for Emma, uh, do you think that there's a, a lower or a higher maximum number of learners? learners. Oh, that is a really good question. Um, and sorry, I should have mentioned that. Um, it really depends on what you're delivering. Uh, so I would say that I've found my comfort level at around about six people in a class. Uh, um, however, uh, you know, that's generally when I'm running a certified course. Uh, it's a really nice number because it enables everybody to, to talk and to discuss um, and it's not too busy. Um, however, I think it really does depend on what you're delivering. Um, there is the opportunity to, of course, have bigger classes, but but don't be um, don't fall into the trap. I would say of trying to cram loads of people in because then it just feels like they're listening to uh, a webcast or a seminar and they're not actually in training. So keep it small if you can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, have you had, have you had experience of digital, digital training helping those who are hard of hearing? Uh, with all with learning aspects uh, to your training. training. Yeah, so I have a history of delivering a lot of training to people with additional needs um, in many different areas. Um, with the digital training, what I have done is um, I have created um, the videos, the one that I showed you a tiny little uh, option uh, of or the tiny little screenshot of, um, I've made all of those accessible to those with hearing difficulties. Um, and I actually reached out to people uh, that work within the deaf community or people who are hard of hearing and actually also asked for feedback to say, you know, is even the language that I'm using correct? Um, mm -hmm. So I would say don't be afraid of, you know, engaging with any of the communities that you're looking to support um, and actually saying, you know, I am not hard of hearing, but I would like to see whether or not this is you know, beneficial and, and suits. Um, so, yeah, definitely engage with people and ask their feedback. Um, from from um, uh, Andrew Collin, uh, what's been the most effective assessments that you have used for online courses? Um, oh, that's a good question. I use lots of different ones. For the video training, we have a simple online quiz, um, and that is enough for what, we, what we're trying to achieve with that and what we need to feedback. For the SCA, obviously we have a quite a stringent feedback form that we do at the end of each course. Um, and that's really good. Um, I would say that uh, it depends on the length of, of what you're delivering. Um, I've done it in many different ways, but even from asking people to set, set an activity up or take a photo or a video of what they're doing, and then I can assess it, um, or by getting them to give me some form of written feedback if they can. 
Um, you know, I kind of assess it depending on what my outcome is. Uh, but I think that having a, a stringent kind of checklist like the ones that we have at the end of the foundation SCA courses is really good. Um, and that gives you as the trainer some structure and it gives you some kind of metrics at the end of it to say, you know, this was hit and this wasn't. Uh, so that is good to have a real structured, you know, feedback form. And always I find with the SCA ones, obviously I do um, at the end of each training, I do a one to one session with the learners. And again, this is why you don't want a class of 30 people because it would take you days. Um, and it gives them the opportunity to talk to you discreetly uh, away from everybody else. They can give you feedback and you can ask them, uh, you know, what their experience was like. And you can also uh, ask them some questions to check their learning before you complete and kind of sign them off. So on a practical point, is there any platforms that you prefer uh, using the most or uh, kind of stuff that you find easy? I mean, Zoom it, uh, has become so popular in these times, but, you know, is there anything else that you could recommend to people that you find useful? I, it's really weird because I was the most stubborn, uh, you know, biggest technophobe going at the start of 2020. <laughs> and now I'm suddenly like an expert in all these platforms because I've had to become... You know, like I've had to learn and test everything. <clears throat> I would say that I have found Microsoft Teams to be really good. Um, I I do Zoom calls, of course. I do Skype calls, uh, you know, depending on what client need is and what their preference is. But for most of my training, I try and always steer people towards Teams. Um, I was fortunate enough that I used it anyway for work, so I just needed to actually learn how to use the system. Um, but it's really good because it enables you to have calls, have chat, um, but also I can have basically everything I've got going on in my life, can have a team, and then certain students are added to certain channels, uh, and never the twain shall meet. So uh, it's really good in that sense. It's all in one space. And the other thing I like about Teams is that I can upload files, um, because I know that I needed, it wasn't about reducing the cost of the SCA training, if we look at, you know, that side of it. It's not about being cheap, the cheapest, the, you know, the, the uh, you know, the lowest price to get my certificate. It's not about that, uh, because that just ends up as a race to the bottom, in my opinion. It's about providing the best value you can. And for me, using a platform like Teams, it enables my students to reach out to me, um, you know, whenever. And one of the really lovely things I find with it is that students will engage with each other. Um, so they talk to each other. And it's really lovely, uh, you know, to see them having a little chat online, um, you know, talking to each other or sending each other an article that they read or uh, sending some coffee samples they want to try. You know, so you can build a community uh, with something like that. Uh, of course, there are other platforms, but that's been my kind of top one that I've utilised. Yeah. Um, um, from, from didn't anticipate yeah. from going online and what did you do to over, overcome it i think technically i needed it was my learning curve was kind of like that <laughs> i went from like i can answer emails and you know google stuff <laughs> to having to learn how to create everything um so i think that uh the I think just not knowing much about like the technical side of it was a biggie. Um, and I needed to, um, I think I thought I could just like jump online and do a call. And then I realized that actually it needed to be so much better than that. I needed so much more than that. Um, there's been a few obstacles along the way, but I, I honestly, you know, touch wood would say that actually it's been more positive than anything else. And I think one of the big things is that, you know, with technology, if it goes wrong, just biggest thing, don't panic. Um, you know, this stuff happens, it's life. Um, so just roll with it, you know, be professional, um, you know, get in touch with everybody uh, and let them know, you know, everything will be okay. You just need a few minutes. You know, there's a few things like that, which obviously you wouldn't have in person. Uh, but other than that, I mean, yeah, most of them have been maybe small hiccups, but um, I think learning, learning to use all the systems was probably the biggest kind of object I had to overcome. <laughs> well, well uh, uh, thank you very, very much, much Emma, for um, 
provide us an insight in terms of, of what you do. The, the content that, that you've developed looks absolutely amazing. And I, I like uh, how the video is very focused on the, the individual elements of, of what's needed. So, you know, I think um, that that having that focused element so you can really see how to clean and it's, you know, so I think we've seen so many videos in the past that are kind of, kind of a bird's eye view and, and a little bit kind of wider angle and stuff. So the specifics of that was really good. Um, so that's um, absolutely fantastic. Um, there's lots of specific questions that have been coming in um, and you can see Emma's contact details on the screen. Um, I'm sure that she can answer some of those um, specifics in terms of how do you calibrate people for sensory, how do you do very specific things. Um, so do get in touch with Emma directly um, and support. You know, I think when people are doing such a great job uh, and taking a challenge like that, uh, it's important that, that, you know, we work together as the coffee community and, and support each other. So, so thank you again for Emma. I'm sure that everybody will uh, um, applaud. So um, we're going to take a coffee break now. Um, but before we do that, um, remember to use the hashtag Bloom UK uh, for any chat on social media. Um, also, um, Bloom UK was made possible thanks to the support of our lovely sponsors, Liquor 43, Da Vinci Gourmet and Brewista, um, as well as our next sponsor who are going to do our first coffee break, which is a Grumpy Mule. And you're going to be hearing from Aaron Stein, who is the head of training in the North region for Grumpy Mule. And he's going to take us through the coffee that um, those people in the UK um, should have. And um, do enjoy. So it'll be about 10 minutes. We'll be back at 3 o'clock um, with our next talk um, with Matt North. Uh, Bartosz will give him a proper introduction uh, for that and uh, look forward to seeing you all then. See you in about 10 minutes, uh, but do stay tuned for the video from Aaron and Grumpy Mule. Thank you. Hello and welcome to my home. My name is Aaron and I am the training manager Hello. for the North of England for Grumpy Mule. My name is Aaron. I live up in Newcastle as evidenced by Alan Nebert and today I'm going to be talking through how I like to brew at home. What do I do? What do I enjoy? Well, in front of me, you'll see three pieces of brewing equipment. We've got a V60 in Kalita sitting next to Thomas there, and in front of me, a Clever Dripper, because that's what I'm going to use today. That is what I use the most at home, and there is a reason for that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everything ready to brew, and once it's ready, and once our water's poured, I'll talk through a little bit more why I like using this brewing method at home. Let's get everything ready. So we're back. The temperature is correct um, of the water I may add, not outside. It's uh, The sun's gone in, it's got a bit cold, so I've shared up. But we're ready to pour. So in goes the water and we start our timer. Pori pori. Now the water, I'm adding 300 milliliters and I do that every morning over 18 grams of coffee. We are going standard, standard 16.66666 so on ratio. Um, the reason for doing so um, is I am using a blend. Uh, I use Grumpy Mule Landscape pretty much every morning. Um, whether that's through my Sage Barista Express, and um, if my wife's off, I might make us a couple of flat whites. Or if I am by myself or looking after the young man, I will use my Clever Dripper. Um, I found that through a Clever Dripper, um, I love body and I love sweetness in a cup. And this really helps show those off, especially when I've got a really good blend like Grumpy Wheel Landscape. Um, so why use a Clever Dripper? Um, the reason I tend to use it is because of consistency. So yes, I can be consistent with a V60 or a Kalita, but I need to stand with the brew. Whereas with this, I have more leeway to leave. 
Now, you may have noticed Thomas and some kids toys around. Uh, I have a lovely little boy. He is 18 months old. And for anyone who has a toddler, they know all about energy. For those that don't, I have a graph. So at work, I plot everything I can onto charts. Well, this here is a chart of a toddler's energy for those who have never had one. You will notice that they wake up and they go to 100%. Now, to this point, I normally need a coffee. Now, they'll have a slight dip around about lunch, but the food gets them going again until they crash and have a nap around about lunchtime. Now, this is my second cup of coffee a day. This is where I can take time to stand over a brew and experiment a little, which I tend to do most days, and I'll do with something else. But in the mornings here, I do need something I can put water in and walk away from. Plus I get that body in sweetness I enjoy. But the reason I need to walk away, he's known as the scrambler at nursery because he's always trying to climb things. He's learned to jog and he likes running into corners. Uh, you need to be fully aware of where balls are, but I can walk away. And when I hear a timer, hey presto, I can have a quick stir and we can draw it down. And it just means every single day, I'm keeping the variables the same and I'll always get a good cup of coffee. Now at this point, I'll normally go and find him, see what he's climbing on, and I'll bring him back through. And he gets excited at this point because dad's about to have his coffee. But what I also do for him is this here is my old espresso cup, and this is my favorite cup. This is now his coffee cup, and he has single water, uh, sing, sorry, single origin filtered tap water from Newcastle. Lovely stuff. But he has this alongside my coffee. Now we assess the aroma, we slurp it, which he finds absolutely hilarious. Uh, this is my morning routine with him that I do every single day and he finds it hilarious, I find it hilarious, I think it's great. Uh, I am hopefully now training the uh, World Barista Champion of 2045, here's hoping. Um, but this is essentially how I start every day and this is why this is my favorite tool in my arsenal at home because I can get consistent coffee. So, draw down is done. We will leave you there. Coffee in the cup. I am gonna go and enjoy this. I'm gonna take him his coffee. It has been a pleasure talking to you. Hopefully see you soon.